for making an Italian classic, the iconic sweet Italian Easter bread. I have been eating this recipe my entire life, it seems like, and I've been making it for my friends and family for at least 20 years. And if you are from the Jersey, Philly, like New York area, like tri-state area, I should say, you can't walk into a grocery store, an Italian deli, a bakery without these all over the place. The, the week of Easter. They are so sensational. It's delicious. It's so much better when you make it homemade. I'm gonna show you my recipe for it. I've already shared this with you about 10 years ago, but it definitely needed to be reshared, revamped, but reshared. You know, the recipe isn't really that different. The only difference is that I made it just a little bit sweeter uh, per the request of a few family members, which is fine, you know. And when you make it, at when it's nice and fresh, it is soft and tender, but it's actually supposed to be eaten days after you make it. And it does get like really dry and it's so incredible dunked into coffee. It's my favorite thing. We make it all week long. I, this is my fourth one in the last like 10 days, fourth batch, which each batch, each batch makes two. This is my Nonna's little milk pan. This is a little pan that I have been make well, drinking milk out of since I was in diapers. You can see that the handle is broken. It's very, very special. And I like to bring it out when I'm making recipes like this because it just reminds me of the good old days. We're gonna take this pan in, in here. I'm gonna add milk and water and a stick of butter. And now this just needs to be warmed up over the stove and the butter needs to melt. If you are anything like me where you really, to you, because to me, uh, Traditions are really important and I keep traditions alive a lot through food. You know the feeling you get when you take out like an old pan or a skillet or something that your mom, your nona, your zia, all of your family members that are really special to you have been cooking in them for years and years and years and it makes you feel like all cozy. That's what that little saucepan does to me. She used to warm up our milk, put coffee and sugar in it. Yes, I said coffee and sugar. If you know, you know. And we used to dunk old bread in it or sweet bread or something like that. And it's just the best. Okay, in the bowl of my standing mixer, I've got all purpose flour. To this, I'm gonna add granulated sugar. The recipe is very easy. It's pretty straightforward, but it's phenomenal. Yeast, my favorite yeast is linked in the description box below. It is the only yeast that I use. It's the best. You don't need to proof it because it is um, instant yeast and it's just wonderful. I keep it in one of these jars in the fridge. It'll let, I do it every six months. I get a, make a new batch. I get a new batch of yeast. And now to this, I'm just going to zest a couple of clementines. If you have an orange, just use an orange. I actually was just completely all out of oranges, but I do have a little girl who loves clementines all day long. So there's always some around if they are at the grocery store. Give that just a quick mix. And now we've got our warm milk and water. Our butter is just about fully melted in. I'm gonna add a little bit of an extract. Ordinarily I'd use vanillina, but I'm really low, which is just Italian powdered vanilla. So I'm just gonna use vanilla extract. I've got a few eggs cracked and ready to go. I'm gonna pour this in here. Everything goes in at the same time. It is so simple, but it is the best, best, best. And it already smells like home to me. Oh, I forgot my whisk, my attachment. Hold on. Pop that on. Oh. Let that knead for about four to five minutes. You want it to come together. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. That looks great. It will be tacky, but it should not. If I can get this out. Come on. It will be really tacky, but it shouldn't be like a wet batter. You see? Like that. That looks great. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna leave it in here. That's what I tend to do. I'm gonna wrap it really well, and I'm just gonna leave that to rise until about doubled in volume. And it is an enriched dough, which means there's eggs, there's butter, there's milk, which means it makes it heavy, which means it takes a little longer to rise. So I'm just gonna be patient, cover it, let it rise. When it's there, I'll show you what it looks like and we'll move on to the next step. Oh! This is why you come here. 
because this is called reality, okay? I forgot to add salt. Don't you, don't you dare forget to add salt. It's okay, it's okay. Put this back on with the motor running. You're gonna add salt slowly to incorporate it and just let it knead for, I'd say, another minute or so. This is why you come here, you know? It makes you feel normal. It makes you feel like I can tackle that. Because if I forget salt, I'm just gonna need it another second. Just put it back in, you know? Okay, now I'm gonna cover it properly and let it rise until doubled. Now that it's salted. My dough is ready. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's thin, you'll see, it's a little sticky. So I'm just gonna flour my surface really good, flour my hands. I'm just gonna use my little dough scraper. You just cannot imagine how good this smells. Like it smells good and it's not even baked yet, right? Just make sure that Lightly floured. You don't want to put too much flour on it because you really don't want to lose that luscious like bounce. This makes two loaves, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this evenly in half. I have a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. I can make this with my eyes practically shut. Okay. You see why you don't want to flour it too much, but also not too little because if you flour it too heavily, you won't be able to really roll it properly. And you just kind of, I just roll and pull. You want about 24 inch ish like rope, like so. Does not have to be perfect. This is just home baking, home cooking. There's no art to this. I suppose the only art is that it's coming out of your kitchen and you know, if it looks not perfect, it just becomes, this is how your kids know that it's your thing. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm just gonna do one of these. Like so. Pinch at the end. See over here is a little bit looser than here. You just take it and you just go like that. I'm trying to do this so that you can see. Beautiful. Just like that. And as it rises, it just looks beautiful. I'm gonna do this other one really quick. Now, you can do these on two separate baking sheets, but trust me, if they bake into each other a little bit, that's fine. You're gonna put a few eggs around. I do about three, and these are our home grown eggs from our chicks. And look at these beautiful colors. We did not dye them. That's just different chickens lay different colored eggs. So we're gonna do that. And the original recipe calls for hard boiled eggs. And then it hit me, why? Because they're gonna just kind of hard boil, hard boil, if you will, in the oven. You know what I mean? And then we just take them out and we eat them. We put them in the fridge and we eat them. I'm going to loosely cover this. Um, I'm just reusing the same plastic wrap because why not? Try not to waste anything. The eggs kind of keep it from sticking too much to the actual bread itself. Otherwise, if it's too sticky, like if it's on the bread directly, it will peel off and deflate the bread. I'm just gonna let this rest another 45 minutes or so, 30, 45 minutes. One, they are about halfway through. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350. So I'll show you what they look like when they are risen a little bit. And then we do one more thing to them before we bake them. Look how gorgeous. It's risen really nicely. Oven is preheated to 350. Now this is the last step, which is just to brush it with a little bit of egg wash, which is just one egg beaten with a little bit of milk or a little bit of water, whichever you've got. And this is gonna make it really beautiful and golden brown. And it becomes like the perfect edible glue for your 
sprinkles. You can also use colored eggs, like dyed eggs, just make sure they're food safe. Um, instead of right, like plain eggs, just be careful because they tend to, like the color tends to bleed into the bread as it bakes. So it's really not my favorite. And then I'm just gonna take sprinkles. I use non-pareils. Typically I like to use Italian sprinkles, but I didn't go to Italy this year, so last year, so I didn't grab any. And, um, but you know, non-pareils work really well. And just like that. And these go into your oven at 350 for about a half hour until deeply golden brown. Allow them to cool completely before you slice into them. So I'm just gonna pop them in and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. These are in the oven 30 minutes and look at how gorgeous. It is simply stunning. It's really soft when they're nice and fresh, but like I said, they will dry out and they'll become really dense and dry and they're meant to be that way because you're supposed to dunk these in coffee and it is so good. Depending on where you go, a lot of places will do like I do where you dust them with powdered sugar and you cut them and you go. Some places do a glaze. I don't care for the glaze to be honest with you because in my humble of opinions, it's just like sickly sweet and it takes away from the aromatic and look at that. You can see the orange running through it, you guys. It is so good. Mm. Tastes like my childhood. Makes me happy. My daughter loves it. It is a long-standing tradition in our family to make Easter bread so that we can enjoy it all week long the week of easter and then i make sure to make a fresh one that we can have for easter someday to dunk into coffee after church it's like such a good tradition that we started with our family and i want you to do the same because it's delicious it's, it's so good it is the best and you kind of get like i said two different textures depending on when you eat it you gotta eat one fresh and then the other one you save it for the next day and the day after that Go to Laura in the kitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. Happy Easter to you and yours. I hope you make it a great one. Bye-bye.